and welcome to my vSAN 6.6 demo. Today I'm going to be showing you what's new for vSAN 6.6. I've already created a vSAN 6.6 cluster which consists of 8 nodes and has deduplication and compression enabled. The first thing to point out here is that this particular cluster is actually running in unicast mode. As of vSAN 6.6 there no longer is a requirement to have multicast enabled on the network. The cluster that we created is an all-flash cluster. In this particular case, each of the hosts has four disks or four devices, I should say. One device being a caching device, three devices being used for, uh, for capacity. We've also stretched this particular cluster across two locations, four hosts being in Amsterdam, the other four hosts being in my hometown, Helmond. Now let's take a look at our first new feature called Configuration Assist. What this new feature does, it will check your full environment to see what actually has been configured according to our best practices. Has, for instance, DRS been enabled? Has vSphere HA been enabled? And if it hasn't been enabled, it will also allow you to configure vSphere HA straight from this UI. So you click Configure VMware HA and it brings up this pane that will allow you to configure it. The next new feature is something that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for, and that's the ability to upgrade your disk controller firmware straight from the vSphere UI. So from the vSphere web client for particular server vendors, in this case Dell, Fujitsu, uh, Lenovo and Supermicro, you're now capable of upgrading the firmware straight from the UI. In my particular situation, you don't see any option here, and that's because I'm running a virtualized lab. Now let's take a look at some of the new capabilities that are introduced from a policy-based management perspective. We're going to create two new VM storage policies. The first policy is going to be a policy where a virtual machine or an object is going to be stretched across locations and we're also providing local protection for that particular virtual machine which is new in vSAN 6.6. So we're going to select the vSAN storage provider first and then we're going to add specific rules. In this particular scenario, the primary level of failures to tolerate specifies the fact that we need to have a copy of the data available in each of the locations. The secondary level of failures to tolerate is all around protection locally. So we're selecting the RAID 5 slash RAID 6 configuration for locally as we, we select that FTT uh, is one. From a secondary perspective, that means we'll have a RAID 5 set locally. So we just finished creating the policy and now we're going to create the second policy. The second policy in this scenario is going to be a policy where an object is not going to be stretched across locations. However, we will want to make sure that that particular data resides within a particular site and also we would like to provide it some level of resiliency locally. So we're going to select the, uh, the vSAN storage provider again and then we're going to create the rules. First and foremost, the primary level of failures to tolerate should be set to zero because we don't want to have any additional copies in the other data center. The second level of failures to tolerate is going to be set to one because we want to make sure that locally we still have some level of, uh, of protection and that's going to be a RAID 5 uh, configuration in this case. Next, we'll select the site where the data needs to be uh, residing, which in this case is going to be the secondary fault domain, which is Helmond. Now the SPBM framework will show you which data store is compatible, which in this case of course is the vSAN data store, and now we're done creating these policies. So next what we're going to do is we're going to provision a couple of virtual machines and look at the back end how the, uh, the components of these virtual machines are actually laid out within our vSAN data store. So we're going to create the first virtual machine, and the first virtual machine is going to be a virtual machine that is stretched across both locations. So we're going to give it a logical name so that it actually makes sense and we know what we're looking at and what we're looking for when we're looking at the backend implementation itself. And we're going to select a storage policy in the next screen. By default, it picks the data store default, but that's not a policy that has been stretched. So we're selecting the stretched plus RAID 5 locally configuration. The next thing that we'll need to do is literally click next, next, finish, and then create the next virtual machine. This next virtual machine is going to be a virtual machine which is not stretched across locations. So in this particular scenario, we're going to select the, uh, the policy that we just created, which stated that the primary level of failures to tolerate is set to zero, which means that we'll only have a copy of the data in one of the locations. However, the secondary level of failures to tolerate 
is set to 1, so we're protecting it locally through a RAID 5 mechanism. On top of that, what we've also done for this particular policy is that we specified the affinity for the data as well. And as you may recall, the affinity was set to Helmond, so later on we'll be checking the virtual machine to see if, the, if those components of the virtual machines are actually stored within that location. There are two ways of verifying where components are stored, or maybe I should say virtual machines. So if you click on the virtual machine itself, there's a policy option there and you can check the physical location of the policy uh, components. The other option, of course, is clicking on the monitor tab and then uh, going to the virtual, uh, virtual object section. So you click the virtual object section and you select the virtual machine that you would like to validate where it has been placed. In this case, we're going to select the, uh, the stretched virtual machine and it should show a RAID 1 configuration with two RAID 5 configurations below it. As being called out in the fault domain section, as you can clearly see, those uh, components, the RAID 5 configurations, are being stored both in Amsterdam and in Helmond. So this particular virtual machine is stretched across locations. Now, if you look at the not stretched virtual machine, you see a RAID 5 configuration as well. And in this case, we select the, uh, the hard disk, and the hard disk is purely stored within Helmond. And that's because we specified the affinity for this particular virtual machine within the policy that we've assigned to this particular virtual machine. Another exciting feature that we released in vSAN 6.6 are the online health capabilities. Some may refer to this as cloud analytics or cloud health checks, but what it essentially is, it's a new framework that's part of vSAN 6.6, which allows us to correlate KB articles with your particular environment. So if there's a known issue with your disk controller, for instance, we'll be capable of informing you about the issues that you may potentially be experiencing. So something that's brand new in 6.6, and although we only have a couple of KB articles that are relevant right now when it comes to this functionality, I expect a lot of effort from a development standpoint to go into this new functionality in the upcoming months. Another nice feature that was introduced in vSAN 6.6 is the ability to throttle resync traffic. If an issue has occurred within your environment and multiple objects need to be repaired, you will see a lot of resync traffic happening within the cluster itself. If for whatever reason that is impacting production virtual machines, you can now throttle that particular uh, data stream. I do want to point out that this should probably only be used under guidance of VMware Global Support Services. What we're going to look at next is some of the new capabilities that are introduced from a decommissioning perspective. So right now, if you would place a host and maintenance mode where you would remove a disk group, for instance, you're not really sure what's going to happen from a vSAN standpoint. In vSAN 6.6, what we actually introduce is some new functionality that will inform you what will happen if you make this particular uh, decision. So in this case, we're going to remove a disk group from uh, this particular host. And when we select this uh, remove disk group, it will tell me that I'll have sufficient cap capacity available within my cluster to actually store that 136 megabytes on that it needs to be moved when I remove this particular disk group. If I would select one of the other two options, it will also inform me that in this case, the objects will be non-compliant with my storage policy. So a lot of useful information presented from that perspective. By now, I've shown you most of the new functionality that's part of vSAN 6.6. The only thing that's really missing in this demo is vSAN encryption, but that probably warrants a demo by itself. What I'm going to show next, which is the final part of this demonstration, is the HTML5 host client. We've introduced a lot of new capabilities in this host client, and in particular, we introduced capabilities around vSAN. What is really cool in this case is that you can go to the host client itself, you click on storage, you select the vSAN data store, and now you are presented with all of the events that are happening or happened on this particular host itself. So if anything has happened to your vSAN server, you can still do some form of troubleshooting. On top of that, what is also new in this release, that you can make changes to the configuration from a host perspective. So you can change the claiming mode, or you can, for instance, disable deduplication and compression, all from within the uh, HTML5 host client. You can also see which hosts are part of the, uh, the cluster itself. So it shows you all of the hosts that are part of the cluster and which fault domain they belong to. Last but not least, there's also the health check. So some of the health checks that you see within the, uh, the web client itself are also part of the host client. And with that, I think we've reached the end of the demo. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.